This is Fountain Pendulum. The subject and pen that we have before us today is the Peniter Avatar Deluxe. And you'll sometimes hear it referred to as the Deluxe UR. So let's take a look at this. There's many features that are unique to this um, particular pen model, but the highlight by far and the primary focus of this video today is this nib. This is the Peniter Quill Nib. Look at it in all its beauty and splendor. It is one of the most beautiful, gorgeously designed nibs on the market. And not only is it beautiful, but it writes, the writing experience is entirely unique to this pen. The design is not just one of aesthetic, which they absolutely did beautifully, impeccably. But on top of that, the writing experience is extremely unique and very pleasant and unlike any other nib I've written with before. There's a lot of um, maybe controversy about this nib being referred to as a flex nib. I'll say right now that in my opinion, it is not a flex nib. It's a soft nib, it's a flexible nib, and you'll be able to see that in the writing sample that will be done with it, but I wouldn't compare it to anything that's actually a flex nib. At best, it would be a semi-flex nib. So let's talk about the design of this nib. First of all, this is the quill nib, and it is proprietary to Peniter, designed by Dante DeVecchio. And on top of that, it was done beautifully, artistically. So let's start by talking about the actual shape of the nib. It's long, the tines are long, which definitely lend itself to softness and flexibility. Um, on the sides, on either side, you'll see that there are cutouts. Now you've seen other nibs with cutouts, perhaps, and usually it's kind of like a chunk carved out. How beautifully and how, how artistically was this done? Gorgeous. That shape, it's just, it flows and it's definitely aesthetically beautiful, not just functional. So that's the shape and the cutout. Now take a look at the engraving or the stamping. So they did an amazing job in my opinion as far as they had good uh, space used on this nib as far as it's quite happening and full, but it's not crowded or over designed. We have the scroll work on the tip of the tines all the way up and it has a beautiful curvature down to the cutout. And then you'll see the slit and breather hole that the breather hole is a keyhole style we have the uh, Peniter logo and the brand name written there, Peniter. Very faintly, you'll see that it is marked as an extra fine nib. And then it's also stamped saying Quill Nib 14 Karat 585. Absolutely gorgeous. On the reverse, you'll see a plastic feed. I wanted to start this video out by just admiring this nib in all its splendor. So let's talk a little bit about this pen and this pen model. So um, this Avatar Deluxe, this particular one is the Neptune Blue 
as I already mentioned, it has an extra fine nib on it. This has um, gold trim on it. And I was mentioning the UR previously. That is representing ultra resin. So that's what it stands for. And the ultra resin, is, it features an extremely durable and resilient resin formula with mother of pearl compound. You can see also the marbleized colors and the glossy finish. So it has good depth to it. You can see the swirls and that marbleizing and also just a very subtle shimmer from that mother of pearl dust that has been infused into this resin. So very beautifully done. This comes in a number of different offerings as far as colors also. So that can be checked out for your personal preference. This is also a glueless pen. So compactly designed precision engineering, which has delivered this particular design that is glueless. And let's check out this band. So you'll see here, it's etched out Peniter. And as I rotate the band, you'll see that finely engraved is the skyline of Florence, Italy. Beautiful detail work. And then we have the clip and the clip is a feather, which is representing the ancient writing instrument, a goose quill. It's quite lightweight and springy. It flares up, which I think makes it very accessible to use when, it time, uh, when the time comes to clip it, whether it's to a bag or a pocket. And I will say too that all the trim on this uh, pen model, uh, it's gold, but it's they're all steel and they're 23 karat gold plated. As you can, I think, agree through all these features of this pen, it's very detailed, very thought out and it definitely has a luxurious detail to it. They stated too that I thought was very well said, this pen is designed to serve as an inseparable writing instrument. And I must say I've been very pleased with the writing experience. So you'll see too with this clip that it kind of functions all the way through the top and it has two anchor points. So it does have a, a large range of motion and it's very lightweight. Now I'm going to point out straight away that there's very little that I'm displeased with in the features of this pen. I specifically acquired this pen for the quill nib and Peniter has several fountain pen offerings that feature this quill nib, but this is their most entry level of the offerings. So this is not their entry level pen, but rather this is the entry level fountain pen that features the quill nib. And it's the exact same quill nib that is featured in their much higher up fountain pens that go for well over the cost of this one. 
So if, like myself, you are very interested in this um, quill nib specifically, then this model, in my opinion, is the way to go. Unless, of course, you're you're absolutely after the even further luxuriousness of Peniter's offerings that have the quill nib also. And there are several. So, um, a couple, a couple things. I'm just going to get this out of the way and talk about the things that I don't care for. And they all live within the cap. So first of all, I like the design. You can see this much better now. I like the design of this feather clip. I like the artistry of it. The design is impeccable. The function is fine. The function is great. The issue to me is the weight of it. It feels very lightweight. And I have no doubt about its durability. It doesn't feel like it's going to break. But in contrast to the weight of the pen and other aspects, it leaves for me something to be desired. But again, there's function with that. I think part of the benefit of having something more lightweight is it's very practical to use um, and it does feel sturdy. Um, that's, you know, kind of nitpicking. I don't really use the clip other than the function as a roll stop. So to me, that's in no way a hindrance or a deal breaker. But where my real challenge comes with this pen is in the rest of the design with the cap. So, um, first of all, from what I can tell, there is no plastic insert inside this cap to help with preserving the moisture of the nib, the wetness of the nib. However, I also haven't had an issue with uncapping the pen and having it dry or not writing. I also haven't left the pen for a length of time to test that. So I'll just disclose that right now. Okay, even further than that, I can live with that still. I have other pens that don't have plastic inserts. But here's, to me, the real problem. This band is beautifully designed. However, it's sharp along the edges. Not sharp like it will scratch you or the pen, but sharp in the sense of there's no taper to it. It's quite blunt. And even worse than that, the inside part right here is blunt also. Again, not sharp like it's going to scratch anything like you or the pen, but it's certainly not soft or smooth, beveled or tapered. So to me, that is a downside, maybe even more severely a failure in um, execution of this cap band because that is what the pen, it's a magnetic cap, so that is what the pen is rubbing up against. The reality of it is when you pull your nib out and your feed, at times this might rub up against that edge and that might, might lead to scratching and even potentially some damage. So that does concern me. Maybe this is not a valid concern. Maybe, um, maybe I could use this pen for years and years and years and no scratches will ever develop or damage to the nib. That's a possibility, but it's a concern. And I think that it just would feel a lot nicer if that wasn't an element. So continuing on, it is a magnetic cap. From what I can tell is magnetic here, here, and here. So potentially we have three magnets going on and the capping is excellent, very satisfying, very strong. 
uh, excellently done. It just fits beautifully. There's no lag, no snag, nothing. I love it. Um, so let's go through the rest of the pen. Here is the weighted steel and finial. So it's not just kind of a cap piece. It feels like that part is solid and it adds a lovely weight to the pen. Um, well to the point where it adds weight, but it doesn't feel back heavy. Like technically it is, but it doesn't necessarily feel that way. So I really like that feature. Um, that's it for the cap. Now we've talked about the quill nib. This is a number six Bach nib. The entire unit unscrews and comes out. I love that. Period. Um, next, the grip section. It's a little bit over eight millimeters. So it's on the thinner side, but not like it's uncomfortably thin, but it definitely, you know, it's not girthy by any means. I'm fine with that. Now we have a band here and a band here, and this is the step. Generally, I don't care for steps and I try to avoid them. However, because they have put this very rounded, rather beveled um, cap on the step, it bothers me not at all. I It really doesn't. And I'm surprised at that because I really do not like steps. Um, the fact that this is a magnetic capping system and that there are no threads is a huge bonus to me. This is my first magnetic cap. I've always wanted one. And I like the rapidness of um, use. And I also like not having to thread. So um, threading itself as a function isn't so much the challenge. I don't like the feel of the threads. And if they're particularly not smooth ones, I definitely feel it in the writing experience. So love this section. I would prefer it a little bit more girthy. I find that I like the 10 millimeter uh, sections preferably, but again, it's not uncomfortable by any stretch. Smooth thread operations here. Same for when I operate the threads for the nib, they function very nicely. So this comes out smoothly. We've got resin to metal. Okay. And then we have a Peniter branded standard international converter. The threads operate very smoothly and this standard international converter is easily and fully disassemblable, which I have done to thoroughly clean out um, any inky remnant. So I really like that. And that is the rundown. So let's put this gorgeous nib down on some paper so I can show you what this nib is capable of. All right, here we are. I'm writing on Kokoyo paper and I am using Ferris wheel press, Candy Marsala. Um, also, this um, cap is postable. It goes about that deep and it makes the pen rather long and a bit back weighted. So I personally do not use it posted.
So all this was written with light pressure without applying any pressure to the nib. Here I'm going to show you a little bit more of, um, you know, testing the nibs capabilities. So this is an extra fine. That's very light pressure. Very light pressure. Now I'm going to apply some pressure. Light pressure, pressure. The amount of softness and flexibility to this pen is very impressive. And the fact that there is, I have not experienced any railroading with it. So I'd say the snapback is kind of, it's not bad, but it, I wouldn't say it's good either compared to a vintage pen. Or even a modified flex pen also. I'm very interested in getting this nib potentially modified. Let me talk to you about the writing experience. The nib is very smooth and perhaps you can hear it, but there's a lovely, pleasant amount of feedback that I very much enjoy. So as far as the grind of this nib, perfectly done. Absolutely beautiful, or I should say the tuning. Now, um, I'll show you under the loop too a closer look of the grind of this pen because I always find it very interesting to take a look at that. And I find that to be, at least in my experience, more of a standard grind somewhat bulbous but still you know kind of sharply squared off a little bit so i tend to like a sharper grind but it's definitely not you know that's just personal preference so i would also say that this is a wet writer almost to the point where I find it challenging for my personal preferences. And what I mean by that is this, that I usually do cursive writing and I like a crisp result. And when this is an extra fine nib and when it becomes this wet it kind of is too rounded and um things just kind of mush together with my size of writing so this is all now personal preference if i'm to write large
I'll just use the back side of the paper here. So if I was to write large, it's not so much of an issue, right? So then you get the more um, maybe distinguishable fine to broad um, lines that you're looking for, that line variation within the capability of this nib. Again, I would label it as a semi-flex. It's extremely responsive and soft. It is by far the softest, most responsive, uncustomized nib that I have ever used. And it's so smooth and it's, it has just the right amount of feedback. It's such a pleasure to write with. I absolutely love it, but it's not a flex nib. So keep that in mind. And I would say too, like I already mentioned, the snapback is, it you know, it has it, but it's not, it's not fantastic. It's not like a vintage um, nib, nor would you expect it to be. I'm just saying. So there's that. Now that's large writing. So then when I do the writing size that I usually, um, is my default, I suppose. You know, that's without pressure. And if I was trying to get flex, there's there's so much ink flow that it doesn't deliver enough contrast between the fine lines and the thicker. Now, I will readily admit that I am not very proficient at um, calligraphy or flex writing by any means. So could someone do better than this um, with this pen? I'm sure they could. I'm just saying in general, for someone who's familiar with this style of writing, that um, to me poses a challenge. Let me say a word about the reverse writing. So again, without pressure, and the reverse without pressure. That's, this is more of what I'm hoping for and an extra fine. The ink flow is more controlled and not so gushy, but it's not surprising that this pen is wet, especially when it's trying to keep up with demand of this without skipping. So the reverse writing is very usable. It's the best reverse um, writing that it, I've been able to experience on a stock nib. It's smooth. It's not even scratchy. It, it's almost like maybe they did smooth it for that uh, purpose, but I think that's fantastic. I love reverse writing. You get a two for one, so it's fantastic. And this is also a pen that's comfortable to hold for the reverse writing, so it's very usable, and I like that. I think that definitely what I'm going to be looking forward to in the future is having a, a Nimeister do some tuning on this. I'm tempted to have the wetness adjusted so that I can get more of my extra fine writing experience on a finer line without so much broadness from wetness. And I'm hoping that if I do that, it will still be able to keep up with the demand 
of this flex writing with pressure without railroading. And I'm even, I'm going to start with that, but I'd be even, even further tempted to get this nib ground down to perhaps an extra, uh, like an extra extra fine or an ultra extra fine because I'm really enjoying the fine nib these days but I'm hesitant to do that because I am so incredibly pleased with the tuning and the grind on this nib that I don't I don't want to lose it that smoothness and that feedback I'm absolutely in love with right now and so I kind of don't want to compromise how it is right this moment as is. So I think that probably just a tuning to help control the wetness to get it a little bit more um, attuned to my personal preferences is what I'm after. But I can't say enough good things about this pen. I really can't. I'm so happy with it and I'm really enjoying it. That nib is just the the splendor. This is the thing too. Even when you're not applying any pressure while you're writing, the writing experience is absolutely lovely. It's bouncy, it's responsive, it's smooth. If you enjoy writing with uh, flourishes, this nib keeps up with it beautifully. So those are some things to consider. And uh, again, in the comments below, if you have some input or questions um, about this pen to share with us, please do, by all means. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your pens. It's all up to you.